Hey y'all, John with New York Metro Weather here with the latest update on the winter storm evolving throughout the area. We have uh, some snowfall ranges and some model trends to go over. We're going to break it all down for you guys over the next uh, couple minutes. A little bit of a longer video here, so stick with us. Here's the current radar. Uh, snow still going on across northern New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, and parts of New York. This is mostly really light stuff. There's not uh, too much in the form of heavy snow, but still it's, it is consistent. And so you're getting these areas of light accumulations, mostly on colder surfaces, uh, melting uh, on the majority of area roadways as it falls, but still it's slick out there, so be careful. And this is expected to continue for the next couple hours into the uh, late afternoon, early evening hours. This is not directly related to our ongoing storm, but it's part of it because moisture is coming northward along a front that's stalled out near the area. And that moisture is forming and coming northward because of our storm system. Let's go look at uh, the storm system that's forming here and is expected to form tonight. Here we have the uh, two disturbances we've been talking about for, it feels like forever now. One of them coming down from Minnesota, the other one coming up here through the southeast states. Two of these guys are going to merge and phase and exactly how that happens is going to dictate where the storm tracks and what the impacts are. National Weather Service has issued a bunch of watches and warnings. We have winter weather advisories here in purple for generally light snowfall amounts. We have winter storm warnings in pink. That includes the New York City metro area. You can see those winter storm warnings. And then we have blizzard warnings here in the orangey red color. That's along the New Jersey shore and Long Island and then up there into New England. The New York City metro is right on that boundary between a lighter snowfall and a much more substantial event. Um, and so these kick in, the winter storm warning kicks in at 7 o'clock tonight for the New York City metro area. Back to the setup though, we have this disturbance, we have this phase happening, and exactly how this occurs still is uncertain. Forecast models are still waffling back and forth. It's all a matter of how this first disturbance gets sort of ingested into this initial one coming down here. And the two of them phase and form this large, powerful storm that develops uh, off the East Coast. Exactly when that storm really wraps up and starts to uh, form is going to dictate how far west these bands of heavy snow actually get. Here's the latest European model. We know yesterday models started to shift east, and then in the afternoon, all of a sudden, they started coming back west. That's because they trended quicker with the phasing that we were just looking at in the atmosphere. This is a European model simulation. You can see the surface low forms off the coast here and then it wraps up northward and eventually those bands of snow do make it back to the New York City metro. You can see the low is um, pretty far to the east but still enough to bring moderate snow back to the New York City metro. Uh, this snow likely developing late tonight into Saturday uh, and then continuing into Saturday afternoon. This is the furthest north and west the European model has been in a couple of days. That north and west trend has continued kind of very gradually uh, over the last 24 hours. But we're in the range now where we can actually look at some higher resolution model guidance. So let's do that. Let's look at the NAM model, which is uh, run at a much higher resolution. And let's see what happens. Here we are this afternoon. It's doing a great job predicting this light snow that's currently over the forecast area. We can see that is happening outside in front of our face. But the NAM is also doing a great job of showing that. That kind of dies a little bit tonight. But then as we get into the evening, and this image uh, on the NAM model valid, right around 10 o'clock tonight, snow starts to really pick up. You see this band moving and developing into eastern Pennsylvania, into New Jersey, the New York City metro. As we go into the overnight, we could see some oscillations, so maybe a quick lull. Then it comes back, though, in the early morning hours. Look at this large area of moderate snowfall across New Jersey, heaviest across the New Jersey shore, Long Island, and coastal Connecticut uh, on Saturday morning. This is the early morning hours here of Saturday. Still continuing into the early to mid morning hours on Saturday here with the low pressure off the coast. You can kind of see where it would be right here and that snow developing. But notice how much lighter the snow is on the fringes. The heavy stuff is just near New York City and to the east across Long Island and New Jersey. By the time we get in the early afternoon, it'll start to wrap up. It'll really start to go to town in eastern Long Island, Connecticut and New England, but we'll start to wrap up in New York. We'll start to see some gusty winds and then the snow will really begin to wrap. But you can see that the storm is at its strongest as it impacts eastern New England. That's why the heavy, heavy snowfall totals are forecast there. But look at the precipitation forecast on the dam model. This is liquid, not snow, um, but you can see about a half an inch of precip just to the west of New York and an inch uh, in really Nassau County. If you go west up to like Morristown, it's three tenths to four tenths of an inch. So that just gives you an idea of what the gradient is. You really don't need the numbers. You can visually see exactly how tight 
the gradient is across the New York City metro. And just to give you an idea of the models going back and forth, here's the, the same model run from this morning, and we'll take a look at the difference. Look how much more moisture there is on this model run. New York City over an inch of liquid on this run, and the most recent one almost cut it in half, down to maybe a little bit more than a half of an inch of, of liquid. So that just gives you an idea of the back and forth that's been going on and why meteorologists have had such a tough time with what really has been a nightmare of a forecast being right on that gradient. So at some point, though, we do have to make a forecast. And what we've started to do is look at the higher resolution models, get an idea as to where that low pressure is going to be, and try to see exactly what they are simulating uh, and what's going on. There are a couple of wild cards that are still at play, and we just want to dive into those real quick to get an idea as to what could cause the storm to come either further west or further east at the last minute. You'll notice that the NAM model has, first of all, a ton of precipitation off the coast. That's what we call convection or heavy thunderstorm activity. So that's going to impact exactly where the surface load tracks. You can see the initial storm is right here, and it looks like it's moving northward towards the New York City metro. But what happens is a second low pressure forms on another area of thunderstorm activity, and that moves off to the north and east. You can see this streak of heavy precipitation here. So you almost have a dual double barrel type uh, low pressure system structure. But this initial low pressure, which if it continued to curl northward would bring more precipitation back to the west, loses the battle to this one. And so this strong low pressure forms, and you can see it elongates the whole thing. It takes the entire thing and drags it to the north and east. So this is going to be sort of the inflection point right here. This is around uh, 8 to 10 a.m. on Saturday. It's going to be the inflection point where one of these two surface low pressures is going to win this battle. If it's the west one, if the thunderstorm activity is less to the east and the west one kind of can catch in all the dynamics and really go to town, you'll likely see this entire shield of precipitation bump a little bit to the west again. If it's the one to the east, you'll see a slight eastward adjustment. And that's why being right on the fringe for the New York City metro is such a nightmare forecast because it's not really going to take much to cause an adjustment. And that just gives you an idea as to what we're watching and we'll have to watch as we move through Saturday morning. Regardless, there will be snow. Let's look at something we call a forecast sounding. Now, I know this is overwhelming to look at, but just bear with me here for a second. What we're looking at is an area average. So we basically draw a box across the New York City metro, and we want to look at what the model is suggesting will be happening in the atmosphere. This is called a vertical profile of the atmosphere. So you're all the way down here, and then as you go further up, the height is increasing. So this is right around where the airplanes fly. Now you're getting into the mid-levels of the atmosphere. You'll notice a couple things here. That First of all, it's very moist. The dew point's riding right along with the temperature. It's cold, 22 degrees at the surface. Um, but also, we have a very broad area of omega, what we call lift. This is one of the main ingredients to get precipitation, to get snowflakes to form, all the way through the mid-levels of the atmosphere. This area right here, these dotted lines, is called the DGZ or dendritic growth zone. And that's where you go, you want these uh, brighter red and purple colors to be to produce snowflakes. So a lot of the lift is just above that region, but there's plenty in, the, in that dendritic growth region to help support the idea that there'll be snowflakes. So what this tells me is that it's not going to be necessarily, you know, ripping heavy snow. This is not a sounding for heavy snow. This is a nice light to moderate snowfall across the New York City area on Saturday morning. Um, that heavy lift is above the dendritic growth zone. That doesn't mean, though, that it's not going to be snowing. There's plenty of moisture here to let the snow fall. It just tells me that this is not going to be, you know, some kind of situation where you have a whiteout in the New York City metro. If you were to adjust this east on Long Island, that lift lines up with the uh, DGZ, and you're looking at a situation where the snow is likely to be much heavier. Back to the NAM model, just to take a look one more time at the timing and zoom this in. Here we are right now. This is Friday afternoon. We'll eventually get this snow out of here, and it'll clear out for a couple hours. But then later tonight, around 9 to 10 p.m., that snow picks back up. Up. We're going to get a burst of moderate to heavy snow. We'll likely see some fluctuations. I mentioned this before. You see it lightens up a little bit overnight. Uh, and then early Saturday morning, this is 6, 7 o'clock, you start getting that moisture coming back in. You can see it rotating in off the coast. And then we have moderate to heavy snow across almost the entire area on Saturday morning. Heaviest stuff really goes to town on Long Island. And this is the point right around 8, 10 a.m. Saturday, when it's either going to be that eastern coastal low or the western coastal low that's going to win out. Right now, we're favoring the eastern one with the heaviest amounts to the east of the New York City metro. And you can kind of see that here in this color table with the heavy snow across the New Jersey shore, Long Island and Connecticut, New York City right on the fringe, and then the lighter stuff in northern New Jersey through Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, the winds will pick up. They'll be gusty out of the northwest. And then we'll see the storm start to pull out. This is valid at 3 o'clock on Saturday. So by the, the mid-afternoon hours, 
this storm will get out of here. Lingering a lot longer on Long Island, though. Still snowing Long Island after sunset on Saturday, and then finally wrapping up early Sunday morning uh, throughout the region. So that's the general sense of where we are. But again, I, I can't stress enough how sensitive this forecast is with the New York City area right on the gradient of heavy snow and the lighter snowfall. Which brings us to our snowfall totals. We worked really hard on these, and we want to show you guys where we're at with these uh, the snowfall ranges. And this will likely be the final update, maybe one more tweak through this afternoon. So let's, let's pull them up. And so here's where we are at with the snowfall forecast. These amounts have obviously increased uh, in the New York City metro. The amounts right now, Central Park, if you want to take the, the actual center of our forecast, is right between 7 and 8 inches. A little less than that in, in Newark, a little more than that in LaGuardia. You'll see a substantial increase in uh, as you get to Kennedy Airport, which is in Brooklyn, uh, Queens, on that uh, south shore there with uh, the amounts closer to 9, 10 inches, and that range even beyond that. And then the big time amounts are on the New Jersey shore here, and then Islip obviously being out closer to central Long Island uh, with that upper end of over 15 inches of possibility. So this kind of covers the whole range of possibilities again these are abnormally high ranges in possibility of snowfall um, and I, the only thing that we can really say personally I hate putting out these large ranges but it's just the uncertainty with the forecast is too great and we don't really have a choice um, these are all within the distinctly within the range of possibilities and possible outcomes uh, but we have narrowed it down a little bit and we're comfortable with where we are with the forecast so we did have a couple questions on uh, social media about adding these locations, and I'm happy that we did add them. We, you know, we had uh, Philadelphia and Trenton on there before, but being more New York Metro weather focused is obviously a big thing given the name of our company is New York Metro weather. Um, so we have uh, Newark, LaGuardia, Kennedy, and Islip as well as Central Park on here now. So it uh, covers pretty much everything. One more time, just going back through the forecast evolution of this storm. Uh, just to cover it once again, we have the snow today. It comes back in late tonight, maybe some oscillations accumulating pretty rapidly now on Saturday morning, uh, and then it'll wrap up Saturday during the early to mid afternoon. But again, that inflection point in the forecast, just a slight shift to the west and we're back into the heavier totals and a slight shift off to the east and we're in some lighter totals. And that always, you know, always I was driving the big range in snowfall possibilities. But again, to just one more time close this out with our snowfall forecast for New York, we are right within that general 6 to 9 inch range with a total right at 7.5 for Central Park at the moment. A little higher at LaGuardia, closer to 8, and then more amount, higher amounts on Long Island from Kennedy to Islip and the Jersey Shore. We'll be with you all afternoon. Updates, radar, live stuff coming for you, um, and we'll have any updates on the latest models that come out, and of course the observations as to where the storm is actually tracking. But we feel pretty good about this forecast moving forward. Hope you guys are able to enjoy the snow. Send us your pictures and observations. Obviously, that helps us a ton with verifying these forecasts. And we'll be back this afternoon with some more updates. Thanks again uh, for watching and following and interacting with us, guys, over the last couple of days. We've really enjoyed it. Uh, and we will talk to you guys soon.